بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف مرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم فإن خير حديث كتاب الله وخير حدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بضعة وكل بضعة ضلال وكل الضلالة في النار أما بعض السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته ما شاء الله that's much better I can hear you can you hear me can you hear me now can you hear me again good in the name of Allah the beneficent the most merciful we bear witness that nothing should be worshipped except Allah and we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad is indeed his final prophet and the seal of all messengers. We bear witness whom Allah guides out of his love, mercy, compassion, and wisdom. There is nothing and no one that can misguide them. And we also bear witness if Allah allows someone to go astray, that no one can guide them to the path of truth as we have come to know the blessed path of Islam. What I like to do, respected brothers and sisters, is go first to the essence of the revelation when we say the Quran is made easy, I think it's important just to reflect for a moment on the prayer of one of the greatest prophets who prayed for the rise of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the Surah Al-Baqarah, verse uh, chapter 2, 127, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala it reads here, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ibrahim, Rabbana wa ba'ad fihim rasoolan minhum yatru alayhim ayatika وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ As you know, brothers and sisters, Ibrahim and Ismail were given the noble responsibility and task of building the foundation of the Kaaba. And one of the things Ibrahim did, he prayed that Allah once would bless that area. But he also prayed that Allah would give them someone, give them a person. Because as human beings, we need live examples. It's okay to talk about the great works of the prophets and men and women of old, but sometimes amongst ourselves, we need examples. We need to see. So Aisha radiallahu an, she said that when they asked her what was the characteristics or the character of the prophet, she said, Kana al Quran, that he was the Quran. That he himself, he was the Quran. He lived. The book. Ibrahim makes a very unique prayer. He says, O oh my Lord, send from amongst them a messenger, Rasul, from amongst themselves. And what is the responsibility of this prophet? He said, One that would teach them the book. Teach them. You kitab. Teach them the book. Wal hikmah. Teach them the book and teach them wisdom. What you him, huh? Teach them the book, give them the knowledge and the wisdom, and assist them in the purification of their souls. Because the right kind of knowledge and the right wisdom, it leads to purification. If you have the right knowledge and the right wisdom, you can assist yourself in the purification of the soul. But there's one thing, brothers and sisters, that I think is important when we say the Quran was made easy is I think we need to reflect on something that is becoming a dangerous trend amongst those of us that live in the Western world when it comes to the Quranic language and these English books that are called English in, or the Quran in English. And I want to make a very important point. The brother made a, a wonderful point that some of the programs here will be in Urdu, correct? And they will be in uh, Arabic, perhaps, in English, right? The beauty of Islam is the diversity of our community. So everyone that comes to an Islamic convention does not have to speak English. Being in America is not a requirement that you speak English, right? When you go to the United Nations, they have official languages in which they speak. But all the languages of the world are represented, and it would enrich in an Islamic convention if we had lectures in Hausa and Mandinka and Somali and uh, Arabic and Urdu and Hindi and Bengali and Spanish and French and even Hebrew, for those that speak Hebrew. So the beauty of it, the Muslim, 
is the diversity. So for those of our brothers and sisters who don't speak English, we must make sure that they have the support they need and that they feel a part of this conference. There's nothing like sitting in an audience or going to a lecture and you can't understand the speech. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You go to Juma sometime, especially the young people. You go to Juma and you don't even know what the imam is talking about. And you'd be surprised. Sometimes the imam doesn't know what he's reading about. But it's tradition. And sometimes tradition is deeply rooted in darkness. When the Prophet ﷺ came to the people of Mecca, one of the reasons they couldn't accept his message because they said it is not the way of our forefather. So as Muslims, our tradition, when it comes to saying the Quran was made easy, the tradition of that is the Quran is a book of knowledge that so few people today understand. Brothers and sisters, I want you to think for a moment. When we look at the Quran, do we understand what we're reading? Like, when we read it, do we understand it? I mean, I really want to stay on this point for a moment. Because the Quran is never easy if you can't understand it. I want you to think. The Quran is not in Arabic, it's not in French, it's not in Spanish, it's not in Urdu, it's not in Hindi, it's not in Swahili, it's not in Mandinka language. The Quran is only in one language, Arabic. That's it. Now you got a choice. You can learn Arabic and teach it to your children, or you can rely upon a translation. And I guarantee you, it'll be difficult to understand. Because if you read the Arabic, it is so clear, you won't even be confused. The Arabic language, brothers and sisters, it is the language of the revelation of the last book. And Allah says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا رَسُولًا إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِ We have never sent a messenger except to speak the language of his people. So yes, we should have some meaning of the Quran in English and in Hindi and Bengali and Urdu. But we should teach the next generation and the youth amongst us, we should teach them the beauty of the Arabic language. Because in order to understand the magnificent and the majestic wisdom of Allah in the Quran, you're not going to get it in English. It's impossible. What do you get in English? You get a person's understanding of Arabic and their limitation and their knowledge of English and its limited grammatical expressions and they tell you what Allah is saying. When in fact, no one can tell you what Allah says, but Allah, Allah tells you in the Quran what he wants you to know. He says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alif la min dhalik al-kitabu la rayma fi hudan lil-mustaqeen. Al-lazina yu'minun bil-ghaib wa yuqimun as-salat wa mimma razaqanahum yunfiqoon. Alif la min, this is the book. In it is absolutely no doubt. But for whom? For those who have certainty. If you have certainty, you have no doubts. You may have weaknesses, and we all do. You have moments of imperfection and moments of rebellion, and we all do, but you will never doubt the message of the book. There's a difference between disobedience and rebellion. Disobedience is when you go against the word of God. Rebellion is when you challenge Allah, and you challenge his law, and you challenge his way out of your ignorance to fulfill your own desires. This is why we say a Muslim is what? A Muslim is a person who has made the conscious decision to surrender their will to do the will of Allah. That requires knowledge. You can't do it on ignorance. What is the first revelation given to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? The first thing Allah said to the Prophet, to make the journey easy. The first thing he did to make the journey easy, he said to him, not pray, not fast, not fight, not zakat, he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Iqara, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of thy Lord. Well, what did the prophet say? When the angel Gabriel said, read, he said, ma ana biqari. I cannot read. Because reading for the prophets in his lifetime, it was common amongst his people that they could not read the prince. But Allah knows the power in knowing how to read because reading is not recitation. 85% of the Muslims have never read the Quran. They recite it. 
You can recite the Quran. It does not mean you read it. Because reading requires comprehension, understanding, observation, and reflection. Just because you say, I've asked Muslim kids, they read, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sounds beautiful. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. I say, brother, what did you read? Sister, what did you read? I don't know. How could you not know? And for those who don't understand the book, Islam always seems hard. But when you know, it's easy. I ask you a question right now. If you had to leave this conference hall right now and go to your room, is it hard to find your room? No, nope. it's easy. You know why? Because you know. If you know the Quran, it's easy to defend the religion. It's easy if you know the Quran, it's easy not to have an identity crisis. I'm amazed sometimes, as Muslims, when we read the Quran, the book is clear of who you are as a people. Muslims, we are not perfect. We have imperfections. But amongst the Muslims in the world today, as it has always been, there are great men and women who are devoted servants of Allah and they pray for the barakat of this ummah and they have sacrificed their time and their wealth for the upliftment of their people. There are great Muslims in the world. Not everybody is doing what's wrong. There are Muslim men and women, you can trust them. When they give you their word, they mean what they say. There are Muslim men and women, they dig deep down in their deep pockets to spend in the way of Allah. There are Muslim men and women in the late night hour when most of us are sleeping. There are men and women in our community, they're standing in prayer, begging Allah for the rahmah on this ummah. And we receive their barakah. You know why? Because they know. There's some people, they have never missed Fajr prayer. Because they know. Some of us, we don't know. So we stay up all night watching television or MySpace or Facebook and we sleep right through the prayer because we don't know what we have given up in exchange for nothing. We give up so much in exchange for so little. I mean a Muslim brother. And I told you this before, but I'm going to tell you again because we don't know. How you change your name to Mo from Muhammad? How you do that? Because you don't know. I asked the brother at Dunkin' Donuts, because this sticks in my mind. I said, brother, what is your name? He said, Mo, what is your name, Mo? What did your mother name you? He said, Muhammad. I said, I can't hear you, Muhammad. I can't hear you, Muhammad. I said, brother, why don't you tell the people your name is Muhammad? He said, brother, the American people can't say Muhammad. I said, brother, the American people can say Arnold Schwarzenegger. They say Osama bin Laden, King Fahad, King Abdullah from Saudi Arabia, King Abdullah from Jordan, the Prime Minister. They know how to pronounce your name, but when you don't know who you are, then you try to assimilate, hoping to be accepted because you don't know. The Quran is easy to understand. There's no requirements. Some people try to make the Quran so difficult to get to. They try to make you think you have to be a really deep scholar. Allah made the book for common people. He revealed it to a common man that was a simple man with an extraordinary heart that took on the mission of every prophet that came before him to teach the people. So I want you to think. I look around the Muslim world. I look at the Muslim community. What makes it so hard for us is that we don't know. We don't know. So when we read the Quran in Arabic, it feels good. And if you know anything about stimulus and stimulating, you'll know that there are things in life that make you feel good, but may not be good. It may make you feel good if you have like coffee and sugar in the morning, you feel good, all right? But feeling good about the Quran is not understanding the Quran. So you may feel good about it when you kiss it and you hug it and you do like this and you do like this. Right? And you think some blessings and something out of this book so powerful is about to happen, but that's an illusion in your mind. Because the prophet never did that, nor did his companions ever do it. So the Quran will be made easy for us when we understand the book. And with that being said, my beloved brothers and sisters, the Quran is a book that has stories, wisdom, history, laws, glad tidings, and warnings. It is a book that you can look at as the blueprint for your life. But don't take the word the Quran made easy as meaning the journey is easy, because it's not. 
The most difficult thing you'll ever do in your life is make a decision to be a Muslim. It's hard to be a Muslim. Oh, it's hard. I'm not talking about being a modernized so-called Muslim where everything is okay. No. I'm talking about it's hard to be a real Muslim. It's hard. It's hard to walk in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad. He said it. He said the dunya is sijjan al-mu'min wa jannat al-kafir, that this dunya, it is the imprisonment of the believer, but it is the paradise of those that are rejectors of truth. If you're a Muslim, you must know this journey is paved with trial and tribulation, but through the moments of difficulty, you shall come to know not only the essence of your faith, but the strength of your deen. You know how strong you are when you get tested. Allah says in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا glorified magnified is he Allah the King of all kings who in his hand is the power all of the power he said he created death and he gave life to see who is best indeed ليبلوكم trial and tribulation now Muslims I want you to think if this Qur'an was to be lived by us, or is to be lived by us, I don't want you to think for one moment that it's easy to do what's in this book. This book, if you live this book, it requires major sacrifice, major. Conscious sacrifice, where you don't do what you want to do no more. You do what Allah wants you to do. That's not easy, because Satan, is very clever. The devil is clever. Satan will tell you the religion is easy. Brother Abdul Malik is making it hard. He says, Muslims, stop eating that hit in the head meat from the supermarket. And some Muslims go, see brother, we like going to McDonald's. Islam is really easy. We like Popeye's chicken. Wait a minute. You want to read the book? Do you want to go to the book? If I say brothers and sisters, as Muslims, most of the television programs you watch is 100% haram. They're looking upon the bodies of men and women that are not properly covered in context of the spirit of Islam. That that's not what we do. You say, brother, you're making it hard for me. But I say, brothers and sisters, when you want to buy a home, no interest allowed in this religion. Interest is haram. I'm going to say it again. Interest is haram. There is no way to make it halal. So if you want to buy a home with cash, it will be difficult in the times in which we live. Hard to buy it with cash. But if you buy it with cash, you manifest the very words that Allah has spoken and the example of his prophet that we can do greater things in the halal than we can do with the haram. But the haram is easy. Halal is hard. The haram is easy to do. To do the halal thing requires character and sacrifice. To submit your will to do the will of Allah, it's not easy. To live out Islam in the midst of all of this confusion, it's hard. This Quran, I will end with this. If you look in the life of any prophet in this book, any prophet, you pick one. Every prophet in this book has friends and has enemies. You can't be everybody's friend. In this book, Jesus, enemies, Moses, enemies, Abraham, enemies, Noah, enemies, Prophet Muhammad, friends, enemies. In this book, this is al furqan This is the criteria. It divides all things and deciphers everything, if you really want to know. So in this book, who's your friend? In the Quran, Allah says, Allah is the friend of those who believe. In the Quran, Allah is the friend of those who believe. So if you're a Muslim at heart and you're looking for friends, you'll never compromise your deen so that people will accept you. Only a Muslim that don't know the book would do that. You never compromise Islam to be accepted by other people. And some of us, we're so in love with the idea 
of democracy that we downplay the spirit and the beauty of Islamic law that is responsible for building and maintaining civilizations for more than 1,200 years, the Muslims were successful with Sharia. Very successful with Sharia law. Now I want you to think, did you know that America practices Sharia? Some aspects of it, they have it. Did you know that one of the oldest Qur'ans is here in the United States of America, and if you burn it, it's a felony charge, federal offense, you're going to jail. Did you know it? I'll tell you where it's at. Go check it out for yourself. My time is up, right? I see the papers. Okay. I want you to go to the Library of Congress. They have a Qur'an that was written more than 1,000 years ago by the hands of the Muslim scholars. 1,000 years ago, they got it here. Inside the Library of Congress, it's under lock and key. You can't have access to it until they first know, who are you? Give me your ID. They want to know, who are you? If you want to read this book here, who are you? Give me your ID. You want to read the Quran? Let me see who you are. In the Library of Congress, there's 147 million documents under lock and key. Sometimes if you request certain books written by Muslim scholars, they'll bring you the book, but it's a two-hour journey. They go pick it up and bring it back, and you wait for two hours in the Library of Congress. In the Library of Congress, my respected brothers and sisters, in the ceiling, it is a dome. And it's a timeline of world history. And it has Greek, Babylon, Phoenician history, goes around. And then you come to America. Next to America is Egypt. But the straight line down, it has one thing written in the ceiling, straight down. It says Islam. Wallahi, go see it for yourself. In the ceiling of the Library of Congress on Capitol Hill, the only, the only dean written in the ceiling in gold lettering is the words Islam. So I went on the tour. Because they got this book in the Library of Congress and they had it for a long time. So for those of you in America who think that you need to give the government da'wah, don't fool yourself. They know more things about Islam than you can dream of. They got scholars at a press of a button. Anything they want to know, they got people who can teach them the wisdom. They study this book. That's why those in the gates of power, they know that if you get to this book, that you are destined to rise. So now there's a campaign for the Muslims to, res to restrict themselves to Qur'ans in English. Are you out of your mind? You must put the Arabic and the English on the same page, on the same book, because when you look at the Arabic as a Muslim and you see the English, it is a reminder that you must get to the original source. But if they start giving us all English Qur'ans, you'll forget one generation from today. They won't even know the Qur'an is in Arabic anymore. That's what they've done with the Bible. All the Bible's in English. You go to the Bible store, it's in English. But Jesus never spoke English. And he ain't never seen the Bible that they possess. But I want you to think, when I went on the tour, let's make the Quran easy, but don't be fooled. The word easy does not mean without trial and tribulation. Because you can't practice Islam if it's going to be easy. This deen requires sacrifice. People have died for this truth. People have been put to death. They wanted to kill Jesus. For what? Speaking the truth. Moses was targeted for death at birth because he was going to speak the truth. Prophet Muhammad was targeted for death and assassination. Why? Because he was going to speak the truth. Don't you ever fool yourself and think you can preach this book and everyone's going to love you. What's in this book is so magnificent, it shakes up the gates of power because they know what this book can do. This book is powerful. This is the prescription for the heart, mind, and soul. This is it. You're not going to find anything better. But on the tour in the Library of Congress, something amazing happened. As we were touring, I looked to the corner, and I saw my friends amongst the American Europeans. And I only use that term because we use the word African Americans. Now, if we get rid of the word African Americans, then we just all be Americans. But if we got African Americans, then we're going to have to have European Americans. And we're going to have to have everybody else distinguish themselves from their place of origin. That's my position. So my European Americans, sisters and brothers in the corner, and I'm watching the tour, and they said the timeline of you know, ancient civilization, they're telling all the contributions. So they get to Islam. In fact, 
Attorney Maha was there and Bayan and uh, my little friend, Amani. All right? And we sitting in the corner. I was watching. They got to Islam. Guess what they said? I'm watching the guy now. I'm watching him. He says, and Islam's contribution to world civilization is in the following. Mathematics, science, engineering, algebra, geometry, calculus, philosophy, and world religion. I didn't hear him say once terrorism. And I waited patiently. Why? Because those who know this book know you cannot be a terrorist and terrorize with the word of Allah in your hand because the essence of this book is to remove all fear from the hearts of all men and women because the thing that we fear most is men when we should fear Allah. That's the whole problem with the Muslims today. They're so scared of FBI and CIA and Homeland Security and George Bush and Barack. They're so scared of everyone but Allah. We fear everybody except Allah. I go to the conference and say, Brother Abdul Manik, please, brother, don't, like, brother, please, don't say this. Brother, what's wrong with you? Brother, you know, brother, you give good speech, but brother, don't say this stuff. Like this stuff, brother, don't say it. How can you have an Islamic conference and know that Muslims are being slaughtered and killed and imprisoned? Your daughters are raped and they are torturing the Muslims, invading their countries, occupying their land, stealing their oil, colonizing the children, and have a whole conference based upon the Quran, and nobody will talk about stopping the war. How can, what kind of conference is that? Or don't talk about injustice. How could you have a conference with Muslim scholars? Not here. I'm speaking of other places. But sometimes I go to conferences and there are Muslim scholars with the Quran and the Sunnah and the war begins and their khutbah is on wudu. MashaAllah, hayakum Allah, habib al -karam. I have zero minutes. But you're all travelers. I said prayer, we can wait. I won't hold you any longer. But I'm just telling you something this, brothers and sisters. In my conclusion, teach these kids the Quran, teach them Arabic. Teach the young people. Create a young generation of Muslims in America who are scholars of the Arabic language. It's mandatory. Muslim youth, they amaze me. They got 5,000 hip-hop songs on an iPod. They listen to hip-hop music. Hip-hop, 5,000 songs. Can you believe that? They have lost their mind. I met a young brother from Pakistan and one younger brother from Egypt. They were sitting in the corridors of the masjid and they walked in. And I'm through with this because I'm saying the Quran will make it easy if you know who you are. And I heard a young brother say to the brother, he said, yo, my nigga, what's up? And I said, whoa. One from Pakistan and Egypt, my nigga? I said, brother, I never knew they made niggas in Pakistan and Egypt. That's an American exclusive product. I never knew you became one of them. Because they don't know. So to all you young people sitting here, I better not never hear you use that word again and refer to each other in that manner. You are Muslim first and last. You are Muslims first and last. First and last. Islam is for us first and last. Allah is first and last. Anything other than that is secondary. Any nationality that you hold is secondary because the greatness in the eyes of Allah in my last verse is what Allah says in the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhan nas inna khalaqna kum min dhakrin wa unta wa ja'anna kum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. Oh people, verily I have created you for male and female. I have made you into nations and into tribes. This is God talking. Allah said, I made you, I made you what you are. You're black, you're white, you're Arab or non-Arab, you're the way you are because you are my creation. I made you this way. Why? Why, Allah? Make it easy for me to understand. Some people are spending their whole life trying to find themselves. I meet confused people all over, the, all over America in the airports. I meet people 40 years old talking about, I don't know my purpose of life. At 40, you don't know. In 40 years. You don't know your purpose? Allah said, I made you into nations and into tribes that you may know yourself and get to know each other and know that the best of you with Allah is not the black nor the white, the rich nor the poor, the male nor the female, but the great one with Allah is he or she who is most righteous. If you want the book to be easy, get knowledge.
If I never see you again, study, Muslim, study. You got a great history. And inshallah, you have a great future. Don't worry about these little people. The little people in the press, Fox News, those little midgets who say Islam and terrorism and all that stuff. Don't get excited by that nonsense. Because Allah says in the Quran, wa makru wa makru Allah, wallahu khayrul makirin, that men plot and they plan, but Allah is the best of planners. And people in America will continue to embrace Islam. Those that are looking for the light, they will find it here in the Holy Quran. May Allah bless all of you. Assalamu alaikum.